Good afternoon, my listeners. I welcome you back and I want you to welcome me back. Let me first apologize for disappearing. It was because I was too busy. I had marine surveys to prepare. I had some more work to do. I couldn't do videos and writing at the same time. I had to finish writing uh, the marine service first, marine service manuals. Uh, today, I want to tackle the issue of nautical science. I have realized that there are failures in grade 10, grade 11, grade 12 in South Africa. Students don't get it right at all. Uh, in my understanding, I believe that they miss the basics because seafaring or navigation you can't go wrong if you've got the basics because it is practical. Once you get it right, that's it. You are done with it. It's a matter now of gaining experience at sea. But the basic principle, the theory part of it, you must get it right. So ladies and gentlemen, nautical science is about navigation. The science of navigation. I am talking to the grade tens today, the young ones, not yet at grade 12, because I believe grade 12 is about practical work. Uh, it's about the syllabus. I've listened, I've seen your syllabus. Grade 10 is about charting, plotting the journeys and, and all those kinds of things. And also calculating angles or bearings and all those things. But when you are at grade 10, you need to get the basics right. That's why I decided to have this lesson for today for the young ones who are interested to have the navigation skills. Now you have a vessel to steer from point A to point B. I mean from the point of departure to a destination, a said destination. This vessel is a big one, a gigantic one. Those we call the conventional vessels or the solar vessels. They fall under the convention called Safety of Life at Sea Convention. They are governed or regulated internationally by the International Maritime Organization. This is the kind of vessel we're talking about today. Where you will be a seafarer, you will be monitoring or watching that vessel. That is your kind of work you're going to do. There's a lot of technical work you need to know. Now, what you need to understand as far as these vessels are concerned, you want to move it, bear in mind, you want to move it from point A to point B. Point A could be Cape Town. You are going to Japan. So, what do you do? What do you need to understand? Now, young ones, the first thing you need to do, you need to understand the interpretation and application of so many processes. Look at the processes, the basic principles, the concepts, the procedures, the symbols, and also you need to understand the earth itself. You are sailing around the earth. So you must understand the grid of the earth. When I talk about the grid of the earth, I'm talking about the, um, the imaginary lines called longitudes and latitudes. Sometimes they call them, longitudes are called meridians of longitudes. And then the latitudes are called the parallels of latitudes. These are structured in this way. There is an equator. 
which is a uh, labeled as a zero degrees latitude in equator is a, is a latitude and there are other latitudes north of the equator and south of the equator you must understand up to the poles north pole and south poles there are those latitudes and also north to south there are longitudes the ones we called meridians of longitude they they move they are structured towards the north and also south so they differ latitudes are parallel longitudes are vertical towards the poles so the latitudes are parallel to the equator that is the grid i am talking about but when you go to practical we will have to illustrate that when, when we go into detail talking about the grid itself on the earth all these bear in mind i said they are imaginary lines you are not going to see the equator with your naked eyes no you won't see you will feel it you won't see it so they are called imaginary lines whether they are longitudes or latitudes now you need to understand the navigational equipment there are different kinds of equipment that are used in the in the in the, in the ship uh, these days there's a lot of technology so you won't go wrong a lot of technology has been developed this equipment you need also to know more about the meteorology the meteorology is the weather itself wherever you are or wherever the ship is heading to you must understand the weather prior leaving your destination you must be able to get the the, the weather uh, 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 how will the weather be as you are moving forward uh, maneuvering your vessel or steering your vessel i'm sorry you need to understand astronomy astronomy is the study of um, sun moon stars planets all those kinds because they have a bearing on the ship itself as far as the direction is concerned the details as we go deep we'll be talking about those especially in grade 11 and also there is seamanship you need to be a seafarer you need to be a recognized seafarer understand all the nitty-gritties know what you should be doing and what you should not be doing will be touching that as well and now how do you get all this how do you get to know all this you have to have qualifications that is the start of it now that you are in grade 10 you have already chosen to be a seafarer it doesn't necessarily mean as i have already mentioned in 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 my previous uh, uh, videos that the myth that maritime is about seafaring only must stop because it means that you are sacking everybody else you are allowing just those people who will be driving the vessel forward or in 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 in, in their terms who will be steering the vessel forward it is not about that it is about so many different avenues you can follow in maritime but in this nautical science sometimes other people call it nautical science but me sometimes you hear me saying nautical science is only because of the latin background i have a latin background so i always say nautical taking it from nauta in latin now you need to have qualifications more importantly the safety of life and property at sea that is your mandate at sea you take care of life the people could be passengers and property property it could be the cargo the cargo you are taking to china because the consignee in china 
is waiting to get his order safe and proper or in a proper condition. That's why you need to emphasize your understanding, safety of life and property at sea, what is expected of you. You need these days, of course, you need to understand security and piracy. It's not that easy at sea. There is a piracy. Understand piracy in the Gulf of Aden. I've mentioned that in my previous uh, lectures. And also, you must be secured. Sometimes there's a lot at sea that is happening. The seafarers could be invaded in one way or another. You need to understand the occurrence of accidents and incidents and or, including uh, near misses sometimes. You must be well alert. You need to understand the language spoken at sea, the terminology and the technology used because this is going to be your daily life, your daily life. Symbols and nautical charts or nautical charts are very important because if you don't understand the symbols you won't be able to plot your journey understand before you leave your your port you must plan your voyage you must plot the journey you must know that you are going to touch here and there and there and pass and your route will be that way you do it before you go as a navigator you don't get lost at sea because immediately you get lost you, you lose your your, 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 your your path you don't know where you are heading to then that means deviation once you deviate it means that the, the, the owner of the vessel is running the vessel now at an expense because there is time you need to arrive in a certain port at such an there's no time for you to deviate to another route because you never planned your journey also uh, I don't want to say planning your journey I want to say advanced planning of your voyage your voyage we call a voyage Call it a voyage at sea. Now, so navigation or navigational skills are very important. You need to be well versed of what you are going to do at sea. Don't be scared. It looks difficult, but once you get it right, it is not difficult because it's your career, you know everything about it. So you are you need to understand what is important is to understand the ship itself. You must understand the ship itself. You must understand the, the route you are going to take. You, are, you must understand the challenges associated with that route. What can you get on the route that is not right? How would you uh, 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 sort out everything that is challenging you on the route on the route so you need to understand the position and the direction you are taking I talked about heading you must be able to know your mathematics because you are going to measure you are going to calculate the angles so that is very important. I've already said, know where the vessel is heading or should be heading. There are challenges on the road. I don't want to say the road. It's wrong to say a road. It's, it's the road. Let me apologize for that. You can encounter winds, strong winds. Let me qualify them. Strong winds, strong currents, strong tides. Those are the challenges that could be unplanned for. You just left, you didn't know that the, the current you know or you don't know 
will be how strong. So you need also to understand the depth of the water. So most of the time you have a lot of calculation. The winds are there, the currents are there, the tides are there. Some of these uh, 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 challenges you have the equipment, you use the technology. You also have the angles and the bearings you have to measure. Now, calculation of bearings or angles, you will need to learn that as we go. Also, about a ship, the ship must be steered, it must go forward. The ship must be maneuvered. It has got turns sometimes, that have ter turns that have got to be negotiated. You monitor the ship, you control it. It must be controlled by you, by human beings. And also, there's watching that takes care. You need to watch everything. You need some of them, you'll see them on the deck, looking all around so that they don't get shocked when something is happening. They must see it before it happened. So you need to monitor the incidents that are happening. And these incidents and accidents must be reported. There is a lot of communication that is done. You need, if you encounter an accident or an incident, you must be able to communicate with the nearby port or communicate with the nearby vessels so that you get assistance. And once more, remember, it's not about a cargo ship only. It could be a passenger ship you are managing or you are manning. You are one of the crew members. Passenger ship. Passengers want to tour the world. They want to get to their destinations safe. That's why I talked about the safety of life at sea. You are the one who is going to make that happen. There is also cargo, as I have already said. Cargo is getting to the consignee. The consignee is the owner of the cargo, the person who ordered the cargo from your boat is waiting in his or her port for his cargo to come. Maybe a businessman selling uh, equipment, that equipment must get to that port in a good condition. So it's you who is going to make that happen. Uh, using your skills in storage. How do you store cargo? What kind of cargo is it? Is it a perishable cargo? If it's a perishable cargo, how do you keep it in the vessel? So, uh, having said that, you have that responsibility. Now, that's why we have talked about good seamanship. We need sober-minded crew. We need knowledgeable crew. We need highly trained crew who can do everything I have already said to respond to incidents, taking care of deviations. If you, have, you, you see that you'll be deviating because of a current, how do you go about calculating your new destination? Those are the kinds of things we need you to know.